In this video, we're going to use the XL650 progressive reloading press to load some 2250 ammunition for a Winchester Model 70 heavy varmint rifle. In this video, we'll explain how to determine cartridge overall length with a cartridge overall length gauge, and we will uh, explain the process of neck only sizing and seating with aftermarket dies. In this particular case, we're going to use the Hornady Lock and Load Overall Length Gauge, and we're also going to use a Hornady Modified Case uh, for use with this overall length gauge that has been modified to fit with this tool. The first thing that we're going to do is validate the fact that we can chamber the modified case in our rifle. So we're going to lift the bolt we're going to insert the modified case, we're going to chamber it, and we've, we've uh, validated the fact that that will chamber. So now we know that uh, when this uh, modified case is inserted into the chamber, it's going to be very close to the same position as uh, when the bolt is closed. So now let's take the bolt off. We're using the Tipton gun vise, which is a really great solution for securing your rifle while you're working up loads or cleaning the rifle, that kind of thing. So now we're going to take the um, overall length gauge and we're going to screw on the modified case and uh, loosen the, the lock nut and withdraw the, the gray rod. In this particular case, uh, we're using uh, Sierra uh, 52 grain um, hollow point boat tail bullets. So we're going to use a bullet uh, representative of uh, what we're going to be loading with. We're then going to take the uh, the cartridge overall length gauge, insert the bullet into the car cartridge overall length gauge, and then feed the rod until we see the the bullet uh, emerge from the front. Now we're going to uh, just loosely tighten the lock nut. I can now um, insert the cartridge overall length gauge into the rifle. So let's see what happens here when we take our measurement. I'm just going to insert uh, the cartridge overall length gauge until I feel it uh, gently bottom out in, in the chamber. I'm going to loosen the, the lock nut and then I'm going to just tap the the gray uh, rod until I feel it gently snug the bullet against uh, the lands in, in, the, uh, in the barrel. We can now take the uh, Hornady Lock and Load uh, Bullet Comparator Kit and then take a, an overall length measurement uh, with this kit, uh, being careful to center the bullet in the, in the gauge. And we're, we see here that we're at three inches, about nine and a half, ten thousandths. So what we can do then is repeat this measurement a few times, and then we'll know where we need to be uh, for our bullet seating. In this case, we've already set up the press uh, by filling the uh, powder measure and dialing in the powder charge and filling the primer reservoir. For more information about those processes, please refer to the Dylan XL650 loading 30 out 6 video on ultimatereloader.com. So now we're going to validate the setup of our dies by checking the seating depth of a bullet based on the dimensions that we calculated using the Hornady lock and load uh, cartridge overall length gauge. In order to facilitate the insertion and removal of cases so that we can dial in the seating depth we're going to take out the brass locator pins uh, number two and number three. Be careful when you set these aside as you'll need to put them back in when you start to load. Now we're going to take a spare piece of brass, insert it at station number four, uh, put a bullet in line, seat the bullet, and then withdraw it from station number five. We can now check uh, the bullet with our uh, cartridge overall length gauge 
to determine whether or not it is uh, at the proper depth. And based on the repeated calculations I came up with, uh, this is pretty good. We're going to be about five to eight thousandths off the lands, which is something we're going to experiment with this time. So when we turn on the case feeder, we will start to get brass feeding into the drop tube. And this is going to result in the drop tube filling. And when the drop tube is done filling, the machine will shut itself off. Now we're ready to load. So we're just going to start uh, feeding in the grass. Station number one, uh, we're going to just size the neck of the case and uh, deep prime as necessary. Here we're using brand new brass, uh, brass so we're not going to be deep priming. Uh, station number two, uh, we're going to be priming um, on the downstroke and then dispensing our powder charge, which we've already validated. Station number three, we could have a powder uh, check station set up here, but I don't have that installed currently so that you can see the operation of the dot. And then in station number four, we're going to do a visual on the powder since we're not using the powder check system. And then we're going to place our bullet, and sometimes I like to just uh, guide it by hand up into the feeding height. Now we have a completed round in, in station number five. We could uh, crimp in, in station number five if we, if we so desire. So once we have things going, um, it's, it's a very quick process for rifle reloading. And with tests with the Zillin XL650, uh, the bullet seating depth with these Redding guys I found to be consistent most of the rounds within about a thousand of each other. Well, there we have it. We've loaded some 22250 ammunition progressively with a Dillon XL650 progressive reloading press. We've saved a lot of time and we've been able to hold some tight dimensions. Uh, a extreme spread of three thousandths of an inch on seating depth with an average variance of about a thousandth of an inch. So for the type of shooting that we're going to be doing that's plenty sufficient, we have new brass and we didn't need to clean primer pockets, which is something we can't do uh, when we're loading on a progressive reloading press. Uh, but this uh, equipment has functioned well for the intended uses uh, that we're going to use this ammunition for, and it uh, was a smooth process as well. So stay tuned on Ultimate Reloader as we cover different aspects of pistol and rifle reloading. Thank you.